Hey guys, Brian here from Liquid Concepts. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about glitters and flakes. And so a lot of customers have asked us to do a video on this, so we figured we'd shoot a quick little video on how we need to mix it up, how to use it, how to spray it, a couple of things to just kind of keep in mind whenever you're spraying it. So first thing is, of course, we have our glitter which is in this case we're going to use our pink glitter now again you can see as we turn this it has tons of all different colors you've got some green and gold and of course pink a uh, very nice shimmer all the way around through here so this is going to be a little bit more um, larger than what a standard metallic is like what's in a paint and so you definitely want to make sure that you do have the right gun and the right tip to be able to spray this out of and so that's kind of what we're going to go over right now is what all you need to have for spraying your glitter items and so um, of course you definitely need your glitter first and then we'll need a paint mixing cup or if you're using a pps cup or any of the disposable cups of course something to mix it in uh, the other thing that you're going to have is you're going to have your uh, inner coat clear so this is going to be a clear base paint that you use and then of course the clear base paint the inner coat clear this right here will also need to be reduced with the reducer right here now again you might use a slow reducer you might use a fast reducer uh, either one of those are still going to be perfectly fine you just need to use the reducer that is correct for your temperature range that you're spraying in so kind of break this down a little bit so this stuff right here, this intercoat clear, it mixes one to one to be sprayable. Now again, you can go two to one, you can go one to one. Uh, in our case, we normally try to go one to one. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this up to where we have one part of the intercoat clear to one part of the reducer. And that will give us a clear base paint that is ready to be sprayed. And so with that, now we can start adding in all of our other materials. So in this case, it's going to be our flakes that we're going to add into it. Now, this is where it gets a little bit, uh, a little bit more complicated because um, a lot of the times, like for us at our shop, what we use is we use a gram scale. And so the gram scale is very nice because you're always accurate every single time. Um, and you can always get the same mixture if you need to repeat it. Now I'll also show you a couple of other ways that you can use. Um, they're not quite as um, exact, but if that's all you got, then of course, then you can use that. So let's go ahead and let's get this all set up here. So we've got our cup there and let's pour this in. All right, so we've got our inner coat clear that we've poured into that. And then now we're going to use the reducer and we're going to pour in the same amount as we did our inner coat clear. All right, so now as you can tell from looking through the cup as well as up top, we mainly just have a clear inner coat or a clear base paint and so now is whenever we would actually have it on um, of course we'd have it the whole time on the gram scale actually measuring out all of the weight of the entire product and so uh, normally what we like to do is we normally like to do about a five percent three to five percent ratio for the glitter itself so let's just say that we had a hundred grams of mixed up ready to go product we would actually only add three to five grams of this right here now again you can vary that depending on how much material that you want to be putting out as well as how much flake you want to throw out in each coat because normally you're going to be putting two to three coats on this it also depends on how much coverage you're going to be getting out of that now um, again everybody is different some people of course i know that they don't have gram scales and so another thing that you can do is is you can just pour it in which is definitely not scientific at all um, if you just pour it in and you make it up to like the next line on the equal ratio marks or something like that um, that's one way to do it but it's definitely not going to be as precise if you ever needed to mix up some more to keep on spraying that same product 
and get the same amount of material coming out of the gun every single time. So that's where a gram scale definitely is um, uh, very popular to have and it's definitely needed for that. Uh, another thing that you can do, and again, I know this is kind of crude, but you can get you a disposable spoon like this right here and you can also use it and so you can go off of one teaspoon. And so you can take this right here and then we'll set that like that and kind of knock that down right there. So then that way we have a flat surface like that. And then we can also go and pour that in right there. And so we know that um, it's fairly accurate. It's not gonna be 100%, but if we're looking at it through this area right through here, we can see that we are, we were at about five and a half ounces is where we started out with. And then of course, once we added that one teaspoon in there, then it brought it up to about five and three quarters or so. But you can clearly see that we ended on the eight ratio. That's where we initially had our material at. And so then we can know from that, if we go four and four, which is eight, so four parts of the inner coat clear to four parts of the reducer, then we know that one teaspoon of this, and then we can put it in there and see how it mixes out. Of course, if we need another, if we need more, then we can always get this again and try to make sure that we smooth that out as much as possible first, so that way it's as even as possible. And then we can pour all of that in there. And then now we can start mixing everything up. If you, do, if you already have the spoon, you might as well use it. And so we can start mixing this up and you can see how everything is getting mixed up really good. Uh, we're getting that crazy coloring from the purple, the pink, all of the glitter that's in there. Um, definitely, uh, it's definitely going to sparkle quite a bit. So at this point right here, now that we've got it all mixed up, now we are ready to go and start spraying it. So there's a couple of things to remember whenever you're spraying it and I'll kind of go over those here uh, right now. All right, so we've got everything already mixed up. Now, the one thing that you'll probably notice is that I did not use a strainer for any of that. So there's a couple of things to remember whenever you're using glitter and flakes. Because they are so large, they will get stopped up in any type of strainer or anything like that that you try to use. So like these are the PPS cups and they have a built-in strainer already in them. So if you are to spray with these, then you have to make sure that you take the strainer and you pull it out. Because if not, then all of your flakes are gonna get caught right there because inevitably it's supposed to help prevent anything from getting into the paint so it strains it all out. But in this case, we wanna make sure that we keep all of those big flakes all shook up as well as going through this. So we have to make sure that we uh, get rid of the strainer before we start spraying. So the other thing that, I, um, that you wanna make sure of is that you have the right tip set up in your gun. Um, if you're shooting the bigger flakes like that, some companies will even recommend like a 1.5 to a 1.8 tip. It is a little large uh, and we have uh, had fairly good use or uh, fairly good luck out of these 1.0 tips, but you have to make sure that you remember that you've got to back this needle out quite a bit because you want that needle to pull back far enough to allow a good amount of the material to come out of there and let the flakes flow out. Most of the time, it's normally better to definitely have at least a 1.3 to a 1.5 tip. And um, for our flakes that we sell, that should be perfectly fine. Like I said, we've gotten pretty good luck out of the 1.0s. They spray them out pretty well. You just definitely have to make sure that you adjust the gun out accordingly. So that way it doesn't all get clogged up in the tip because the tip is just barely pulling back. And of course you're not getting any uh, material coming out of this. So one thing to kind of look at too is, is that if you come up here and you look at this real quick, this has only been sitting for just a few minutes. And you can see here how pretty much all of this has settled all the way down to the bottom like that. Can you see that? And so 
Um, the one thing that you definitely want to make sure of is, especially whenever you have that in the in the cup that you're using to spray out of, you definitely want to make sure that you're always shaking this up. So you can see how we always need to keep shaking this up and moving it. So now we're actually getting it all mixed back up and all mixed back in. And so we definitely want to make sure that as we're spraying, that should be good, that as we're spraying, if you ever leave your gun any any length of time sitting either on a stand or just laying down like that or anything like that, the second that you pick that up, you definitely need to keep shaking that because then that'll keep everything mixed up as well as it'll keep everything all uniform all the way around. So it's pretty much just having some type of agitation all the way throughout the entire time that you're spraying. And so, of course, once you've got it all sprayed, then you can sit back and look at how well that really looks. And so it's definitely going to uh, be really nice. You're gonna have a really big flake on it. It's gonna pop really good. And of course, in the sunlight, you can tell whenever we were stirring this that it has all different kinds of colors and everything all through there. So you can definitely um, uh, make something very, very unique. And you can even see what this would look like with like a white base coat. If it was down on it, it would look more of like the lighter pink. And then you could even take this and spray it on a black and get more of a lot darker dark pink and still have a lot of that metallic and all of that in it. So you can really use this quite quite a lot with a lot of different areas. And so of course you can even use this with the hydrographics because you can have your dip and then you can spray your uh, flakes over the dip and then you can have just a one-off complete custom look. So another thing to keep in mind is, is that whenever you're mixing all this up, definitely have a piece of paper or something down because the glitters inevitably will get everywhere. And as you can tell, we just did this real quick. If I move this out, I've got glitter all over, all in here and all around and here, it is everywhere. So definitely make sure that you have something down ahead of time or else uh, you're gonna be cleaning up glitter all over the place, everywhere. So definitely make sure that you have something down for that so then that way you can pretty much take the paper, clean it up, it's super easy or get a vacuum vacuum it up not a big deal at all but um, definitely want to make sure that you uh, remember that so hopefully this video has really helped you out if you have any questions or comments definitely leave them below we'd love to hear from you on anything hydrographics related as well as let me know if you have any questions on any types of the glitter or anything like that mixing definitely love to help you out and get you guys doing some really cool and awesome jobs also, uh, if you like this video, you might also check out our training videos that we have. We have tons of training videos on our website and we'll include a link in the description below on the entire process for the hydrographics from start to finish. So definitely make sure to check that out. Also, if you haven't already, definitely hit the subscribe button. We'd love to have you subscribe to our weekly tips and tricks for anything that's hydrographics related. I'm Brian from Liquid Concepts. And this is how we customize your world. See you guys next time.